This is the model that we're going to be working with in this lab, and it's um, it's similar to one you've seen before that combines a global carbon cycle with a global climate model, and it includes components that um, calculate our energy um, needs and our sources of energy, which then relate to the carbon emissions that affect the climate. It also um, monitors the economics of all these changes to our climate and energy. This one also includes some geoengineering options that I'll explain in, in a little bit. So over here, there are a lot of controls. They're kind of color-coded according to the different, um, the different things that they represent. So green here represents conservation of energy. The purple or blue represents renewable energy. The, uh, the red down here uh, relates to one of the geoengineering schemes, which is the direct carbon removal uh, from the atmosphere. And the orange down here uh, deals with um, <clears throat> the other geoengineering scheme, which is the injection of sulfate aerosols into the stratosphere to block sunlight. So let me just show you a couple of things about this. So you open the model and you run it, um, and it calculates this all out over a couple of hundred years. And this shows the global temperature change that results. And, and here we haven't really done anything to increase conservation of renewables and the, um, the geoengineering geoengineering switches are off. So this is kind of a the do-nothing scenario. And we have a very high <clears throat> temperature um, rise by the end of this time here, six and a half degrees warming. So now we could say, of course, well, what if we conserve energy? So this number here is the percent of our energy that we reduce by conservation methods. And this is the, the growth rate of that. So this is 5% increase per year, which is pretty good. Uh, so if we run this and see what happens, and compare it with the sort of do-nothing scenario. And you see it lowers the temperature, but it's still unacceptably high. And so you could say, well, what if we uh, increase our reliance on renewable energy? Let's bring this up to, say, 75%. And we run that. <clears throat> and we see that this does a little bit better. But still, by the end of this, look, we're up at 3.6 degrees uh, global temperature rise, which is, is really quite alarming. And by the year 2000, we're, uh, 2100 rather, we're above that two degree limit that uh, we sort of agree upon as the upper limit in the Paris Climate Accords. So now we've added here uh, some geoengineering options. And these are kind of like, if we just can't manage our carbon emissions through conservation and switch to renewables, uh, we might want to investigate some of these to help us prevent a, a climate disaster. And so let me, I'm going to uh, restore the renewables to where it was before. And I'll just turn this on. So now this is going to activate the, the direct removal of carbon from the atmosphere and then the, the burial and sequestration of that carbon underground. So here's the time at which it starts, 2030. And in here you pick a target atmospheric uh, CO2 concentration. So here I've got 400. Let's just raise that to 450 here. And this is the, the rate of cost decline of that process, which is initially uh, fairly expensive. And this represents how quickly our capability to do this grows. And this gives us the initial amount of carbon that we can withdraw from the atmosphere in one year at the very start. So this is pretty generous because we can't really come close to doing one gigaton at the present time. But things are changing rapidly in this field. So let's see what happens here. <clears throat> and we run this and we see here's our result. Look, this brings us down, keeps us below two degrees for a very long time. So that is a fairly effective means of keeping our climate under control. If you switch on some of these, the other pages, you'll see that this is the, in blue, the CO2 concentration in the atmosphere rises, and then we start to get it under control. And then we've brought it under control here for, it's, it's close to 450, it's a little bit above, until this point in time in which it drops down dramatically and it drops down dramatically there just because we've run out of fossil fuels and so we're no longer able to emit any um, to the atmosphere at this point in time, so 2197 or 98, something like that. So that's the direct removal of carbon. Another option is uh, sulfate aerosol geoengineering and we turn that on. 
And this is where we inject sulfate aerosols, these little tiny particles into the stratosphere. They block some sunlight. And so here's the, the starting time uh, for this process. And here's the, the targeted temperature change that we're going to try to control to. So this will try to keep the temperature change to 2 degrees or less. And this uh, is the cost decline rate. I've got this at zero right now, kind of assuming that, you know, this is not such a technologically tricky process and probably we're not going to see huge advances in the, in the sort of ability to do this per dollar. So I've got that at zero initially. <clears throat> well, let's just run this and see what happens. Um, we run the model and there you see this does a very good job of keeping it right at two degrees through this whole time. Well, all of these changes have um, economic consequences and some of those you can see on some of the other uh, graphs here. Let's see, this one is... Um, Here's the total cost per person, uh, per capita that is, in terms of thousands of dollars per year. And those last two that we ran, they both end up costing uh, something like about $9,000 per person per year by the end of it. And that's to pay for all of our energy supply and all the climate damages um, that are associated with the, the temperature change. <clears throat> So this is just a, a brief introduction to the model. Um, you can restore everything to the sort of an initial by clicking those two buttons. And so we're going to do a series of experiments with this model to, to make some, get some sort of assessments about what is the best thing from the standpoint of the climate and also the economy in terms of um, getting us to a future that, that, uh, that includes a, a, a tolerable level of um, global warming.